Well, hello, and welcome to Walking Through Acts. Um, this is installment number 16, and the location in the book of uh, Acts, Acts of the Apostles in the Bible, is uh, chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. Uh, we're about to read here of the first non-Jewish convert. Um, it was not uh, a immediately done. That was God's will that uh, non-Jews be preached to uh, the gospel. Um, that was his wish. That his, that was God's will. And so, uh, of course, I'm fine with it. And I'm always hopeful of being fine with anything that's God's will. Whether I think it the best way or not doesn't matter. Uh, but he saw fit to wait quite some while, uh, preaching first to the Jewish people, then um, to non-Jews or Gentiles. Uh, uh, and that's what we read about uh, tonight, or today rather, in, uh, in chapter 10. Uh, verse 1, it's a, it's a Roman soldier named Cornelius. And uh, it's a fascinating story. Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, chapter 10 of Acts and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea, I might stop there and say Caesarea or Caesarea, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea in Israel, um, and uh, so that's the location. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to uh, the people, and... Um, Prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, it's what we would maybe call like three o'clock in the afternoon, um, 12 hours of day daytime or daylight and 12 hours of night. So the ninth hour of the day would be in the mid-afternoon. He saw clearly in a vision an angel uh, of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa, and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He's lodging with Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually, so when he had explained all these th things to them, he sent them to Joppa. Uh, you could preach uh, a long sermon on this, but I'll give it a quick word. This is called walking through Acts, and maybe I should say run running through Acts because we're going along at a pretty good clip. Uh, but I do want to bring out a few thoughts. Uh, first of all, as I've already said, I'll repeat, this is a non-Jewish uh, person being preached the gospel to for the first time and uh, will eventually convert to Christianity, and so I'll go ahead and tell you that in advance. And um, he, he's a Roman soldier, uh, not just uh, any old Roman soldier, uh, uh, not an inf infantry man, we might say, a foot soldier, if you will, uh, but he's a, he's a leader of a regiment. Uh, a centurion would be the idea of a hundred, and uh, so he's uh, over a regiment of, uh, of soldiers. And then listen, listen again to that description given by, by God and by Luke, who's writing it. Uh, he was a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, gave alms, alms is like charitable uh, donations, generously to the people, and prayed to God always. All right, so here's a, we'd say a really good fella, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly, uh, a very, very good man. But and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but something's not done or it's undone in his life. And what is that? Well, you can probably easily guess uh, he doesn't know Christ. He doesn't know Jesus. Uh, uh, so we're getting to that, but we're not there yet. But just suffice for now, notice how good a man he was. I'm not going to read it again, but it's in verse 2. What a wonderful fellow. And, and this man uh, knows the true God. He's not even worshiping idol gods like many non-Jews might have been doing at the time. In fact, I know they were. Uh, the Bible reveals that information. That's why I know they were. But he's not one of them. Uh, we can only surmise and guess as to how did he come to know anything about the true God of the Jews. And uh, it, maybe it was through the Jews uh, that he came. And maybe he was helpful to them. Maybe he, be, though he didn't, did not proselytize himself, uh, uh, become a proselyte convert to Judaism, 
nonetheless, we find uh, whether he did or didn't, nonetheless, uh, somehow maybe a lot of good influences uh, had come to him and in his life. And, uh, and then I'll make the next point real quick and we'll get back to the reading. Uh, God sends an angel to tell him to go get Peter, get Simon, also known as Peter. And he's residing, as we read in chapter 9, with a, another man named Simon, uh, who's a tanner by trade, and he lives by the sea and so forth. And so uh, we'd say, well, if you go, this is me talking, well, God, if you go to the trouble of sending an angel, why don't you just have the angel reveal it uh, to him what he needs to do, what he needs to know, and so forth. Interesting. That's not God's will. We've already noticed this a little bit in Acts chapter 8, if you recall, when God had um, uh, Philip go preach to a, an Ethiopian man riding along in a chariot. Remember that? If you, I say remember. If you've listened to the previous uh, uh, episodes of Walking Through Acts, you, remember, you might remember that. God's will is that human beings teach human beings. And it's not his will that it be messages in the sky, uh, angels whispering in your ear, or, or any of even dreams and other such things that he might have used in the past. Not now. Not now. It's through Jesus and Jesus through through apostles, prophets, gospel preachers, sometimes called evangelists. In this case, it's Peter, an apostle. Okay, enough said. And so off, off he sends people uh, you know, off to get Peter like he was told to do. All right, back to the uh, story. This is verse 9 now. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, it's not far to Joppa, so you know they can get there pretty uh, quick. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. That might be what we call noon. Uh, then he became uh, very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, meaning people downstairs, we'd say, in the house, made ready, he fell into a trance. Um, and he saw heaven open. And, and, and an object, like a great sheet, bound at four corners, at the four corners descending to him, and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice, a voice spoke to him again, the, the second time, What God's cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Pause there just for a minute. Peter, I'll call him that, he's also known as Simon, but Peter needs some help too with regard to what's about to take place. We, going back again to chapter 8, Philip was helped in, his, in God's providence to be at the right place at the right time to intersect with the man on the chariot and so forth and so on. Here we find Peter being helped to get ready for some people that are coming to fetch him to go to a non-Jewish uh, person for, for gospel preaching. And, uh, and so Peter needs to be helped. Uh, Jews and Gentiles, I mean, you talk about racism today. I don't think, I'm not saying it's not at all uh, uh, prevalent or, or, or a part of our society. It's not. It's nothing new with us. Uh, Jews and Gentiles. Oh my! Did they not get along? And uh, when I say they didn't get along, I mean they were quite segregated, if you will, in many respects, at least. Um, and we're going to see that that it's uh, quite. Uh, it's qu quite difficult, maybe. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it will be quite difficult for Peter to to do what God wants him to do when he has that also going on. And that is, uh, these are non-Jewish people, you know. And more on that as we get there. So here, it's it, it, God helps to by uh, by by getting Peter to rethink, you might say, some of this kind of thinking by by dealing with the principle in 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 animals that uh, could be killed and eaten, uh, but were off limits. We they were not kosher, we might say. They weren't Jewish approved. And and there were sir, and that's what he means by unclean. Doesn't mean they're you know the the, the animals needed their hooves uh, you know the mud washed off of them. That's not unclean. What they're talking about. He's talking about it was ceremonially by God's pronouncement off limits. Uh, in that scene, since it was common or unclean, there were animals, but not for eating purposes. God had regulated the Jewish people with their diet along these lines. Not the only thing. 
Um, most people are familiar with one. They're all familiar. We we all are, we love our bacon. We're all familiar with pork and ham and and such like. But you know there were a lot of animals, not just pigs, uh, that were in that camp. So anyway, the sheet is let down. He's seeing it in a trance, and uh, and 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 a voice is saying, you know, and he is hungry. He's very hungry. Uh, dig in, eat. No, 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 no. I don't eat what God has told me not to eat. But what I call clean, don't keep saying is unclean. That's an interesting point. And not just interesting, it's an important point. Uh, I was the one that said it's unclean. If I come along and say it's clean, that's God speaking. Don't you keep saying no, but it's unclean. And don't put it back on me saying you can't do that. I was the one that did it in the first place. And if I want to undo it or change it, that's up to me. Verse 17. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, Behold, the men who had been sent from uh, Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the uh, vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down, go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men who had been sent to him, and Cornelius uh, sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I'm, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews, was uh, divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Some of this doesn't need too much elaboration. In fact, I don't know that any of it needs elaboration, but I'm, I'm providing some elaboration uh, as we go along. Uh, but uh, this time I won't uh, say too much other than the men arrive. Uh, they, they locate Peter inside. Uh, they very, very well just spell out what has happened and why they, why they have been sent there. And uh, Peter, so far, so good. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, I don't know what time of the day it is by now, maybe three in the afternoon or something, uh, whatever time it is, afternoon or evening. Uh, spend the night and we'll, we'll go tomorrow. And the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him, lifted him up saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, You know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection. As soon as I was sent for, I asked them, For what reason have you sent for me? So Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He's lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you've done well to come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. <laughs> I just love this story. It's great. It's wonderful. A couple points here, and I can see by the time that this story, which goes all the way to the end of the chapter, uh, this is one of those stories which the Holy Spirit gives a lot of information about. Uh, in fact, we even have in chapter 11 some further talk about the story after it's completed. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, it's so much longer than what some stories, some some events in the Bible, I've already talked about this, very briefly addressed and dealt with. Some of them are just tremendous, uh, uh, stupendous, uh, magnificent, great, great, great uh, events, and uh, <laughs> the Holy Spirit deals with them as like they're every day. And uh, so, well, anyway, this is not one of them. This is one of those stories which uh, God, through Luke, um, talks quite a bit about. So we'll save the other half, or the second half, if you will, uh, for next time. But let me comment briefly on this, and then we'll stop. And that is, uh, one thing's for sure, and maybe couple, one, maybe two. One, notice Peter says, God's shown me I shouldn't consider any man 
uh, uncom or common or unclean, even though, of course, he considered non-Jewish people unclean and, and unlawful for me to have any, you know, association with you and so forth. Uh, how, where did he pick up? Where did he pick up that? Where did he? Where did he learn that? He said, "God has shown me." Well, it's through that vision or that trance that he had when he saw the um, um, uh, the, um, the the blank or not the blanket, but the sheet let down and the animals and so forth. And he was and and Luke, who's writing this, says he pondered, he was thinking, he was wondering, what was that all about? What was that signifying? What was that teaching? Peter makes no doubt about it. God was saying, not just animals, people are not to be considered unclean. Aha. Uh, this, by the way, we get some insight in, into how God sometimes likes to likes he how He likes to work in revealing. Sometimes it's just point blank a revelation. There you got it. But in other cases, He likes to lead people to gather and draw that conclusion to understand. I won't say for themselves, but with themselves involved in the mental processes of arriving at that decision. It's not all just spelt out. And you don't have to think about it. Just read what the what what the text says. But he has to think. Now, what's this all about? And God knows exactly what He's doing, and that works. Um, anything more before um, we finish? Well, I might just mention this as 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 I as I stop. That is that Cornelius has gathered people around, and uh, we want you to hear all that you've got to say. Oh yeah, and I didn't want to. I don't want to forget this one. He so much as wanting to hear what Peter has to say, he just falls down before him as if he's God and or, or an angel, like another angel, you know, that kind of thing. And Peter won't have any of it. And amen. No man should have any of that. Anybody bowing down before them, um, kissing their ring, kissing their feet, just showing, um, you know, worship of them in a way that is not fit only. It's only for God. And uh, Peter, you have to applaud him. Uh, knows that that is way out of place, and he lifts him up. I'm just a man. Stop that. And uh, so that's good. That's great. So next time when we resume our, our uh, Walking Through Acts series, uh, we'll pick up with what the uh, words and preaching of Peter are and uh, the response of Cornelius and his household to that preaching. Uh, that'll be next time. Thank you.